And while I was building this road, I discovered what looks like a cave here. Uh, is it a cave? Oh. Maybe it's not a cave. Maybe it's just... It sure looks like a cave. Is this one of those goes off into the no man's land thingies? Yeah, I think it is because I can't even crouched. I can't go any further than this. Okay, let's go back before we get stuck. <laughs> I, I saw this from what you know, I was building the road. I'm going, oh man, we'll have to check that out on camera. Uh oh, uh, Houston. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and uh, Pioneer Lady, what are you looking at? You should be watching the road. Um, maybe I should be watching the road. <laughs> anyway, welcome, everybody, to Satisfactory. In this episode, we are going to build out our compacted coal power plant. Um, and I have a few things I want to show you first before we get started in earnest. Uh, the first one being that... I finished the road down this way to where we're going to build the plant. And I have also uh, laid out the pad, basically, uh, that we're going to need. And while I was building this road, I discovered what looks like a cave here. Uh, is it a cave? Oh. Maybe it's not a cave. Maybe it's just... It sure looks like a cave. Is this one of those goes off into the no man's land thingies? Yeah, I think it is because I can't even crouched. I can't go any further than this. Okay, let's go back before we get stuck. <laughs> I, I saw this from, you know, I was building the road. I'm going, oh, man, we'll have to check that out on camera. Uh-oh. Uh, Houston? There we go. <laughs> it sure looked like a sneaky, sneaky cave that those guys would have made. But apparently not. Okay, so anyway, um, I have, uh, I've done a lot of, you know, prep work for this. And I'll show you what I've done. If you uh, look on the right-hand side coming up here, I have set up the miners and the conveyor routes for uh, the coal and the sulfur. We'll take a closer look at that. And then uh, when I got down here, we brought the road this far um, and I just I blocked it off there with access off the road that direction and then down to uh, the power plant here so let's go ahead and park our Explorer right here um, I'm gonna go into fly mode for a minute just to give you a bird's-eye view of what's happening here okay um, so let's look at what's going on over here first we've got our our coal miner set up. Um, everything is clocked to 270 per minute. This build can support up to 300 per minute, but until we get the Mark IV belts, we're limited to 270, which means I am going to build the whole thing out, but we're going to have to keep about six, I think, six or seven generators offline um, until, until we can get to Mark IV. Uh, so that'll be a priority for us for sure. Um, this is, as you can see, this one's, uh, this is only a normal node, so it took me three shards to get this one to 270, but it will clock, it'll max out to 300 uh, when the time comes. And then the other node, I don't think I mentioned this, but the node back down there is a, um, that's a pure node. So that only required one shard on the Mark II Miner to get it to 270. Okay, and then these belts run underneath uh, the roadway. Uh, in, in, in terms of the road, uh, I did put these supports in place. I mentioned, uh, I talked about this in update eight because my main base was built out over the, the sea on the western coast, on the Gold Coast. And so, you know, this water is really deep. I mean, it goes down probably, I don't know, 100, 100 feet maybe, as you can see there. And so... I just kind of imagine, you know, because this is a futuristic sci-fi game that these have some kind of anti-gravity <laughs> um, properties to them and, and can work just floating on the water. I know that's kind of lame, but it's just the way it goes. 
Um, I'm not even sure if I can get anything all the way down to the, the seabed there. Uh, so we're just going to run with that. But at least it has some supports and it's not just floating on air. Of course, I guess you could also make an argument that since it's a futuristic space age game, stuff can float and it has built-in anti-gravity properties. So yeah, you could do that too. But I, I like to have supports to make it somewhat realistic. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we got the coal running down here. And then further on down the, the way here, we've got sulfur running. And that's that set up each one of these axes have um, ladders so I can get, you know, get up here on foot if I need to. And let's come over here now and take a look. We're going to go way up in the air. And this is the pad that we're going to build our, our factory on, our, our power plant here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be building four groups of coal power plants and so if we go to our calculator here we're going to ultimately produce 300 compacted coal per minute and the coal generators oddly enough take 7.14 per minute of compacted coal which comes out to about 42 uh, 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 generators okay and so we're going to put 11 in each slot so in each one of these slots, but but then we're going to underclock the 11th one so that the math ultimately works out. Then we'll be placing our um, uh, water extractors in these little ponds here that we've set up. Uh, I've also built out all of the cosmetics, uh, or at least most of them. That, uh, we're going to put these in sheds, and that's going to be included in our build. Um, and then these pads here are what's going to hold the smaller assembler sheds that's creating the compacted coal for us. All right, so let's get this party started. I have on uh, the right hand side of my screen, I have my list of uh, products that we need. I have, uh, I did find one more, um, what's called Mercer Sphere, and I put that on top of the, actually the Caterium, or not the Caterium, I'm sorry, the Quick Wire, because I, uh, we're going to be putting a lot of lights up in this, and um, it takes a lot of Quick Wire. Uh, but in addition to what I have in my inventory, I've got a, a, some extra stuff in here. And I think I may I even have a couple extra items uh, in here. So I think I have everything I need. But of course, if I don't, uh, that includes, you know, what, what what's in the, the depots too. Uh, we can go back and get more stuff. I do have some bad news for you guys. I've, I have I seem to have misplaced. Well, I didn't misplace him, but <laughs> Doug the Doggo eh, seems to have wandered off. I've looked all over for him and I cannot find him. You know, back at the at the pyramid base. So I don't know if he's gone for good, if he's stuck somewhere, if he just decided he didn't like this one-way relationship where he was giving and I was taking and that was it. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, unfortunately, uh, Doug is nowhere to be seen. So if he doesn't come back, we'll find another doggo to exploit. I mean, to, uh, you know, to befriend. So yeah, anyway. Okay. Let's get this party started. So we're going to start off here with our first assembler blueprint. And actually what I would like to do is put those on a hot bar. So let's go to, let's see. I'm going to, uh, let's, yeah, let's just use hot bar three for this build. Cause you know that we can always move this stuff around. So we'll put the assemblers on one. We'll put the coal generators on two, the splitter arrays on three, um, and then we'll put the northwest corner on four. I kind of I'm trying to think of the sequence here. Southwest corner on five, front on uh, six, back on seven. East in front on eight and east in back on nine. There we go. Okay. Let's do this. So we're going to uh, grab the assembler blueprint here and we're going to line it up on our pad here like so. Uh, if you guys have been watching me for any length of time, you know that I like to put machines on the, the tread metal or the grip metal foundation. Uh, for two reasons. One, it helps me, you know, uh, gives me a marker for where to place it when I place the blueprints. And it also, I just like the, the look of it. You know, the machines are on the metal instead of everything just being on concrete all the time. 
Okay, good. So that takes care of that. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come over here and we're going to grab ourselves a, a couple of conveyor poles. And we want these to go up four. Two, three, four. And another one here. One, two, three, four. And we're going to run... Everything is Mark three now because, of course, I don't have Mark four. What I will do once we do get Mark four is I'll come back here and upgrade everything to Mark four. And I'll also um, prob probably upgrade the blueprints, too. That way, if we want to... You know, we can expand this. I mean, we got all that ocean out there. We can even go out that way a little further before we get the danger zone. The thing is, though, is if we did expand this particular base we would have to ship in more sulfur because there's no more sulfur in this area. Uh, that's all we have. So that's why I based it upon what's, you know, uh, close by. But that's not to say we couldn't use a, you know, a train or even a truck and ship more in later if we wanted to expand this. It's just a good spot to do it because it's wide open, you know, space and everything. Okay, so um, we got those belts run. Now um, I want to get temporary power uh, here. We're going to set up the first bank of these, let them get up to speed. It'll take them about 20 minutes, I think, for the water manifold to, to fully, you know, fill completely up uh, so that we can have it actually start generating power for us before we start the next ones. I have, to that end, uh, run power down here. And let's actually hop up here for a second. And I think what we'll do is let's just run a got the wrong toolbar here. One, two. Oh, hold on a sec. How'd that happen? My toolbar got toolbar got messed up. You're supposed to be in one, and you're supposed to be in two. I must have accidentally did that when I was working on the test save or something. So we're just going to run this power line down here uh, for now, but this is temporary. It's not going to stay this way permanently, but we just need to get things started here. Uh, so I guess we'll just put it right there. Okay. And we should have enough headroom uh, to, to get all of this done. See, we're only consuming 1,100, that, so we have about 400 megawatts to play with. I know the maximum consumption is quite a bit higher. In fact, it's actually over the max now. But a lot of the stuff that this is accounting for is turned off at the moment. So we should be okay. We only need about 80 to 100 megawatts, I think, to get this first bank started, if I remember correctly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a splitter and put that there. Line it up. We're going to put another one here. Line it up. And everything behaves there. We're going to run the sulfur line into here, get another splitter, and run this line into here, which I think needs to go there. Is that? No, I think it might maybe needs to go there. Looks like it might be a little too low, yeah. And that way these uh, assemblers can get started with uh, making their... Uh, Oh, you know what? I, I need to redo the the power on this blueprint. Because I actually want the power to come off the ceiling. But that's something I will work on later. So for now, let's just hook into here to get them powered up. So what we're going to do then is is we're going to when we set up the coal and don't worry about this clipping because again that's temporary. Uh, we're going to run the coal belt across there to the generators, but before we do that, I would actually like to get let's see where do I want to put this? I'd like to store some compacted coal so we have it to re, you know to manually restart things if we need to later before we actually start using it. So let's uh, let's grab a storage box and we'll put this right here and I'm just gonna like I said I'm just gonna temporarily connect the output of this to our storage box and start filling it up okay 
And that's compacted coal. Has a little bit different model than the normal coal. It looks more compacted. What do you know? Very good. All right, so let's start storing up that compacted coal. And while we're doing that, we're going to get to work on the sheds and generators. All right, so each one of these assemblers is set to make 25 compacted coal, which is its default 100% clock speed settings. I'm not going to change that. And we will have a total of four of these set up um, or 12 assemblers. Um, each making uh, 25, so 25 times 12 is 300. So that's how the math works out on the compacted coal. All right, so I went AFK for a little bit to do some stuff, and we already have a full row of this, so let's let that continue to run and fill up. Um, and I just want to make sure all of the spice is flowing, which it looks like it is. Everything's good there. Okay. Let's head on over here and get started now with the sheds and then the coal generators. So the thing is, is, you know, as I was uh, building this out of my test save, um, it's, it's very difficult to, to put these sheds down after uh, the coal generators are, are put in place. So we're going to build the sheds first and then the generators. It's easier to do it that way. So what we want to do is we want to get, um, here because we're going to put the pull of the shed on this marker here. All right. So let's go back to our toolbar here and we want number four, which is the Northwest corner. And we want to basically bring that to here and then right to there. Make sure that pole is right in the center and put it in place. All right, cool. Now we want to come to the back and we want to grab the southwest corner of the shed. And let's step out here a little bit so we can kind of see what we're doing. Let's freeze that. Make sure everything's lined up correctly, which it looks like it is, and we should be good. Okay. Looking good. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm using the new chain link fences. I, I've mentioned this before. I wish the game had um, like barbed wire or razor wire because that's something you would often see in an industrial place or, you know, like a substation. Um, so this is really kind of the closest idea I could, I could come up with. Uh, in the past, before we had these, I would, you know, like use these rails for that purpose. So it's a little weird, but I think it works. You don't pay too, too much attention to it. <laughs> uh, all right. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and put uh, all of the back pieces in place. It kind of doesn't matter at this point now what order we do the rest of them in. So the back pieces, I think, were seven. Yeah, shed back. Okay. So we'll just kind of try and get it close and then... We'll nudge it the rest of the way. And that looks correct there. Freeze and nudge. And one more. And then on the east end, of the shed, uh, we have uh, like an uh, an end piece, you know, just because of the limitations of the blueprint designer. And that's going to be, I think, this piece here. Yeah, shed, east, end, back. And that should pop in right here. That looks correct. Okay, good. Now we need to add the front pieces, which we'll have to do from this end. And that should be, I think, number six. Factory shed front. Yeah, okay. CC stands, of course, for compacted coal. And uh, we're going to want the pole for this to be 
right about uh oh no we gotta move it over to about here and then make sure that's right in the center everything should be lined up up here and i believe it is let's lock it in place and then the next one should go right about there we need to nudge it over and pull it back one make sure that's in the center looks like everything's lined up next one goes here pull it back make sure it's in the center And then lastly, we have the uh, number eight, which should be the east front end piece. We'll slide that back to there. And that sh edge of that wall should come through there. That's looking good. That's in the center. And I think we're golden on the shed. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, I'm not going to hook up the lights until the new power is actually up and running, so we'll do all that stuff later. And obviously I left, you know, this opening in the roof for the uh, smokestacks of the generators. I, I've debated whether or not I wanted to just have them, you know, clip through the roof because in, you know, in a real world situation, it would be, you know, basically like a chimney going up through a roof with the, you know, the flashing and the seal around it. So I don't know. We, I, I still might do that. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave this open. Very good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set down now our first uh, set of coal generators. And so we want to make sure that uh, facing us this way, we want to lay it down here and put it maybe right about there ish to start with push it this way and bring it here so so that the this little kind of pad thing is the front edge of it is more or less lined up with this seam and that looks correct let's pop that in place okay good now we will go down, uh, just go down the line and set the rest of these in place. So we just want to get it where it turns green and then just double check it. We want to pull it here and push it back one there. might be easier to do it like this it's really finicky there as I can see the green line there so that should theoretically be lined up let's double check it yep it is okay you know how the green lines go in this game there. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Well, they always work. It's just a matter of what are they actually lining up on, you know? Uh, okay, and then this final one, we'll push that way and let's freeze it. I think, I think that's right. Double check it. Yeah. Now the blueprint has uh, three generators, you know, per blueprint, but we only need eleven, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, cut this last one out. We don't need it. There we go. It's a beautiful thing. Now let's go ahead and set up our um, splitter arrays. So that's gonna be number three on my toolbar, and we want the arrow to be lined up on this middle splitter and then we want to push it back to I think right about there uh, one more and if I did everything correctly and that's a big if this should line up perfectly with that 
the output of that merger over there. And it looks like it does just from jumping up and down there. Pretty sure it does. Okay. If you guys think that I'm making this look easy, well, it took me hours to figure all this out and get everything adjusted right and tweak everything. So it's it took a lot of work. But I, I just love doing all this, you know? It's so much fun. So much fun. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and add the next set of splitters. And this time we'll get the green line there. So as long as our white arrow is lined up correctly, which it wasn't, we need to move. Oh, oh, hold on. Let's get into blueprint mode. Uh, I need to be lined up on this cent center splitter. So let's try that again. As long as I'm lined up on the center splitter and I see the green arrow, everything else should line up correctly in this particular case. Okay, let's do this one next. Make sure we're lined up there correctly. And we have the green arrow uh, right there. Nope, I was off on that one again. Move over one more. Okay, now we have a green arrow. And but but okay, so now we don't don't have the green line. So yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll do this. Well, that's actually correct. I think we're good. Okay. And then this is technically the center one here, because remember we cut that off. Okay, I've got the green line that way, and that's good. All right. Now let's just uh, get rid of you and you. Okay, next thing we want to do is go along and reset all of our splitters. Let's put the filter on so we're only taking away the splitters. And then we'll just go down the line here and grab all the splitters, take them out, and reset them. Unfortunately, I just didn't have room in the blueprint to, you know, set these... So now we got to just go back and reset them all. Let's make sure we're using Mark. Uh, whoops. Uh, here, let's do it this way. Grab that. Make sure it's Mark three splitter, which it is. And then we'll just jump up here and listen for our, our tinks. Excellent. Now on the way back, let's get our pipes connected. And that should link everything up. Let's just run down the pipeline and make sure it all looks correct. Butissimus. Let's see uh, how we're doing on our spare compacted coal here. All right, so we're almost halfway filled up. Next thing we're going to do is our water extractors. Okay, so let's grab, uh, let's have some coffee and let's have some coffee. I had to get the sip sound in there. Okay. So we're gonna run a pipe here and make sure it's green, has the green line so we know it's straight. And what the hell did I, I hit the wrong button. There we go. We're gonna jump up on a pipe here and we're gonna grab ourselves. Oh, you know what I forgot to account for in my to-do list are the extractors. So that might short us a little bit of stuff, but of course I can go back and get more. All right, so let's grab an extractor here. Now, I want this to be kind of in the center, uh, the base of it, centered in our little pond here. So I, ha um, I don't really have a good way to measure that, so we have to kind of guess a little bit. We can line it up with the pipe, of course, this way. So, and we only have to line up the first one because then the rest of them will line up on this one. So let's just try that and see how we did. I think that's good enough. I think we'll run with that. Cool. Okay. Grab this pipe. Um, I want this to be noodle mode because it gives us the nicest curve. 
Okay, now for the next, the next one, to, so that they're spaced evenly, um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a pipe junction there, but then we're going to move it three this way. One, two, three. And this should lock in on that. It doesn't. All right. Well, damn it. We're going to have to eyeball it then. So right about, I'd say there. And let's also go over to this third, well, actually fourth one. And go one, two, three. Yep, that one's not behaving either, so I'm going to have to manually align it. But we have a nice big green line to help with that. Very good. Now, let's run... Make sure we're using this one. Let's run this line out to here, just like we did before. Jump up here, grab an extractor, and this one... Now we can just use the green line on the left to line it up and then a control line aligned for there. Lemon squeezy. All right, let's do this next one. So we want this one here. Our green line right there. You have just a tiny bit of wiggle room on that green line. So I try and get it as close to in the center as possible. And then we'll run off the end here, make sure we have our green line there. And there's our green line in our green line. I think we're good. Oop, uh, that right there is good. It's off by a couple millimeters. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Fantastic. All right, let's get the power run for the extractors, but I'm not going to actually start them up. I want to I want to preload the Jennies with the compacted coal first. So, um, oh, by the way, I'm going to put a switch in. This is going to be a little substation. Um, so that way our power plant is on its own network. Um, so we will be putting a switch in here for that too. And I need to think about that for a second. So why don't, whoop, what the hell? No, go back to the other toolbar. Let's grab, oh, the other thing I want to do too is I want to put a door in here. So let's go to walls and doors. And if we just hold control down, we can replace the wall with a door. And yes, I do know that I can also texture these with the metal finish, but I like the blue door just to give a little contrast and add more color to things, in case you were wondering. All right, so all of these coal genies are already hooked up on the power uh, and connected to the ceiling, thanks to the magic of blueprinting. So we're just going to run this line out to there. And I'm not worried about it clipping through that. That's conduit. <laughs> okay. Um, wiring is one of the things in this game that I'm a little bit more lenient on when it comes to clipping just because, you know, in some cases, like, for example, when you hook up to here, the wire, you know, clips through uh, or can clip through the tower and there's just absolutely nothing you can do about it. I suppose you could run a power pole down to the ground and hook to that. That's a thought that just just now occurred to me. But anyway, nevertheless, let's um let's put that bring that over to there. And maybe we will actually set our switch up right now. So, I think what I want to do is let's go to power and uh, power switch. And I want the left insulator lined up underneath the tower ish so let's bring it to can i half nudge that yeah i can okay that's about 
as good as we're going to get that in terms of being underneath the thingy. Thingy being a technical term. You guys already know that, though. I think that's, yeah, I think that's about as good as that we're going to get. And we could hit you up to there. Okay, now we need to get the main power from here down to this in a neat fashion. So why don't we run a line down to here? Yeah, that looks good. And then we will use conduit to go through the wall. Oh, we don't need to use conduit. It just goes right over the fence. That's even better. Even better. And if I do that, that is going to go into the wall. Okay, so put that right there. And we'll run you over to here and make sure that you are lined up there. And this switch is currently off and we want it to stay off for now. But because the water extractors themselves will be on the network, um, we want them on this side of the switch. All right, now let's go ahead and run another power pole to probably here. Um, otherwise, we're going to be glitching into the railing, which I kind of don't want to do. So, yeah, we're going to run that there. And then we'll just go along and... Um, Line up on the south and on the insulator. And then look down here. Oh, you know what? I can actually do a half nudge if I set these down without the cable attached. Which is something you can do if you guys didn't know that. Okay, so um, let's grab, yeah, let's just do that. So we'll grab this pole here, line up on the south and make sure we're lined up on the insulator. And this down to here. We are going to have to slightly underclock all of these extractors too, but I'll, I'll go through all the math after we get it built out here. All right, same thing. Let's go line up on this insulator. Make sure we're lined up on the south. And the last one over here. I suppose what we could do is hook the wires up, but yeah, you know what? It's actually, it's going to be faster for me to to just hook the wires when we're ready to start them up. Let's just do it that way. Very good. Okay, so we are essentially ready to start our first uh, bank of power here. Uh, how are we doing over here? Uh, is something, is something slowed down? What the hell's going on? Got product up there. Did I... All right, why is product not moving? What's going on? We're out of sulfur. Okay, that means something is wrong somewhere. Like, maybe I have a Mark 1 lift or something. Well, no. We've got sulfur, a full belt of sulfur to here. So that is all correct. Oh. 
Then I, oh, I must have accidentally taken that lift. That lift down. Oh, son of a beech nut. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even realize I did that, obviously. Uh, oh, I put it backwards, didn't I? Try that again. We want that to be this way. And the spice is flowing once again. Okay. Oh, that sucks that that happened because it could have been filling that thing up. All right, guys. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the camera and I'm just I'm going to let that fill up. I want it to fill completely up so we have that compacted coal to use to manually start the system back up if it goes down, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and that's probably going to take a good, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes maybe of real time. So while I'm waiting for that, everything else all the way down is going to be set up exactly like you see here. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and get started setting up the other three banks. And when those are all in place, I will bring you back. And then we will start up the first bank and get it fully up and running. And then we'll start the second, get it fully up and running, etc., etc. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back. And we have filled up our bin here with compacted coal. Hopefully we won't need it, but if we do, it's there. So let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start running the coal, the compact, uh, whoops, uh, running the compacted coal into uh, here. That shouldn't clip. I check that. Yeah, that's good. And let's just double check that it's straight. It looks like it is. And it is also level. It's a beautiful thing. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let all of the machines completely fill up with compacted coal and get the line completely saturated. And when that happens, then we will power up the water extractors. I managed to get all of the assembler sheds in place, but there's no, I didn't hook up the power. I also fixed the blueprint so that the power is coming off of the uh, ceiling now instead of from poles, because I just like that better. I think it's cleaner. And uh, I managed to get another shed in place and I also built out this little substation here uh, for us too. So um, I'm going to cut the camera and keep working on the sheds. I'll bring you back when all of, uh, when everybody over here is uh, fully filled up. I forgot to hook these belts up here. So let's do that now. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. <laughs> now the spice is flowing. All right, guys, all of the machines are full and the lines fully saturated. I think we're ready to fire this first section up here. Let's hop on over here. And um, we have, uh, oh, we can't tell from there. Let's go up here for a second. We'll look at this one. All right, so we currently have, um, uh, let's just say that's 1,200. So we basically have 30, uh, 380 megawatts, uh, which is should be plenty. Because again, I think we're only the the these four machines are the only thing that's going to draw more power because the coal generators will start producing power as soon as they start up. And these only take 20 megawatts each. We have four of them, so that's 80. Yeah, so we should be fine. I'd be very surprised if we crash the network. Okay, so we got those wired up. And we just need to temporarily connect this. Moment of truth. Okay, good. I didn't hear the dreaded power system crash sound. We all know what that sounds like. We all know it. We all hate it. <laughs> okay, cool. 
Let's start to see water flow in the pipes. And our first generator starts up and then shuts down again, which is to be expected. Okay, so, um, oh, we got to do some clocking. This last Jenny, we need to clock down to 50%. And then, so that'll produce 37.5 megawatts. Reason for that is we're producing a total of 75 compact of coal per minute with our assemblers. Divide that by 7.14, and we get 10 and a half, essentially. I'm not going to worry about the four in that third decimal place there. Um, so that means the 11th machine, of course, needs to run it at half, at, at 50%. So we have a total of, um, what, was the, what was the power on that again? 37 and a half. Okay, so if we go uh, 10 times 75 plus 37.5. So each bank will produce 787 and a half megawatts of power. And of course we have four of those. So if we do um, 787.5 times 4, 3150. It's exact, the exact number that I have planned for. Now, the other thing, is, too, is that when I unlock it, we will also add some alien power generator thingamadoodles over here. So that's what this space is for. Um, the, you know, the alien power, the things we do with the summer slips. I can't remember what the hell they're called. It's this thing, the power augmenter, right? And uh, the reason I haven't unlocked that yet is because I don't have 50 computers. But once we do have that unlocked, then what we can do is we can start using the augmenters and putting them over in this area here, uh, which will boost our power even more. I have played around with those on the test save and they're, they're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they have some awesome sound effects too. Kind of reminds you a little bit of, uh, reminds me a little bit of the combine in Half Life. You know, some of the sounds that the those alien machines and all that made. A little bit creepy, very cool. Okay, so it's gonna take about probably about 15 to 20 minutes, I think, for these guys to fully come online for the water to water manifold uh, to completely fill all the machines up. So um, what I think I'm going to do here, guys, is I think I'm going to wrap up the episode now just because I got to actually go somewhere in real life. I have an appointment. And um, so I'm going to finish getting this set up, get everything online, make sure there's no issues. If I do run into issues, I will let you know what those are just because some of you may want to know you know, what, what I ran into and how to fix it. Um, and then when we start the next episode, I will, I'll show you the, the completed project here and then we can start working on the next thing. Um, also if you, uh, I've had a couple of you reach out to me and, you know, show interest in my blueprints. So what I'm going to do, if you are interested in these blueprints or any of my blueprints, uh, I'm going to put those on a Google Drive. In fact, I already have put them on a Google Drive. And I'll place the link uh, for the blueprints in the video description, starting with this video. Um, and that way, you know, if whenever I build new blueprints and put them together here in the series, I'll put them in the folder for you guys to use as well. All right. Very good. So I think that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And um, when we start the next episode, this place should be all up and running. I'll have all the lights hooked up and we'll see uh, the end result and go from there. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I, I, I think I thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, uh, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye bye.